Well, many in the media are just claiming, look, there's no evidence that this drug, which again has been around for 60 plus years, uh, there's no evidence it works against COVID. What's your message to them tonight? No, good evening. Thank you for having me on this evening. I really appreciate this. I really want to say that, you know, you have to give this an opportunity. And for me, it saved my life. And I only can go by what it is that I have gone through and what my story is. And I can't speak for anyone else. So that's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm only speaking for myself. And tell what us what I happened with your diagnosis. diagnosis. Yeah, tell us what happened with your diagnosis. With my diagnosis, it was a very long process. Let me, let me just start by saying that it was a very long process. I have been home in quarantine since the 12th of March. Um, that was the last time that I actually went to session. And from that point on, just started feeling downhill all the way. And it took the longest for me to be actually get an appointment, get in with, with my doctor, which was the 18th of March, and getting in from with my doctor, and then actually getting the COVID test. From the time I actually had an appointment, getting checked and thought I had a infection uh, and maybe a little bit of pneumonia, that was what the diagnosis was. From there on, and then, antibiotic, um, amoxicillin. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I didn't I'm mean sorry, we have a bit ahead. of a delay here. We have a bit of a delay here, which is a really frustrating part. Another frustrating part of this shutdown because we have a delay. So again, so then <laughs> when did you start getting the hydroxy and then what happened after that? I did not receive it until the day I actually got tested for COVID-19 and that was March 31st. And I just plummeted that day. I mean, I went from zero to 100 in a time. And it went from the, the headaches to being extremely severe, to fluid building up in my lungs, to sweat breaking out, the cough, my breathing being labored. It all happened in a matter of hours. And I really didn't have any time between my husband and myself, Jason, to make a decision on whether do I go to the hospital, which I honestly did not want to do. And that has nothing to do with the care that I thought I would receive there or the first responders or the nurses that are there. It had nothing to do with them. It's the fact that the hospitals were full near my area. And that I honestly believe that once I got into something like that, I may not actually come out. And that was my biggest fear. And I knew that this medication would possibly save me. And Representative Whitsitt, you didn't know about it until you heard it in the president's briefing? I heard, knew about it previously because I do have chronic Lyme disease. And so, it, but it was not something that unless the president had mentioned it, that it would be accessible. If the president had not, if the President Trump had not talked about this, it would not be something that's accessible for anyone to be able to have, get that right now. It would not even be possible. And I mean that with, honestly, because I did have a difficult time even that day obtaining the medication because of an order that was put down in my state. So your state was one of the states that said, uh-uh, and -uh, Nick, you know, Nick's the the prescriptions of hydroxychloroquine. We saw that with a number of states, and your state was yes, also and that, one of and them. That day. Yes, and it was on that day. So you can imagine how terrified I was that you know I had to really beg and plead and go through a whole lot to try to get the medication. And my husband was able to pick that prescription up that night, and I was better within a couple of hours. So for anyone uh, you know who thinks yeah. that. I just want anyone to know who thinks that it was a very short and easy process and that, you know, I went to the doctor and I got diagnosed and, you know, I got my test and, it, you know, I got the medication that was over and done with and I'm under quarantine. No, it was a very long process and we've been in the house since March 12th. Hmm, brother. Well, Representative Woods said, I'm so glad you came on tonight. Uh, people call these stories anecdotal. Well, data is anecdotal. It's, it's all a bunch of anecdotes. And yes, it is. At some point, we make, we make decisions. But thank you so much.